I walked into Rolls Royce here in Scottsdale and I 100% was there to buy a car. Yes. I wanted you guys to understand the, the value of studying like what we're doing together. Yes. Is to, is to be armored where if that way doesn't work, you can go this way and you yes. can go this way. There's levels to this y'all. Hey guys, what's going on? It is Andy. I'm here today with my boy, Eric Klein. I know you guys have seen him a lot with me. Today, I'm gonna be dropping mad value. Matter of fact, I asked, asked Eric to drop mad value. I was talking to him, we were kind of role playing back and forth about sales objections that people get. Now, Eric, I'm from a couple different industries and Eric's from a couple different industries. And as we were going back and forth, we really isolated the top three objections. I'll say yeah. the top three toughest objections that people get. So we're out at our house, we wasn't planning on shooting this, and I was like, you know what? Let's make a video for all the salespeople, for all the leaders on the top three toughest objections. Now, Eric Klein, me and you are a close lot. Uh, you were really in the wholesale industry with real estate big time, right? Yeah, yeah. Built one of the biggest call centers in the world, building another one, doing some pretty crazy stuff. We're together every month. So I know you guys will see him a lot, but let's drop some mad value for all the sales pros out there. Let's um, go. I know you got some tricks, let's yeah. unload. So I mean, listen, at the end of the day, uh, if, if you're watching this, you're, you're more than likely in sales. That's right. And uh, it's, a, it's an industry where there is no cap. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about getting in sales, like this is the time, like now, mm -hmm. yesterday, you wanna be doing this. And I, over my 15 years of doing this, millions and millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I've been able to put a financial fence around me and my family um, through sales. Yeah, that's right. So I owe everything to this industry and I want you to have the same thing. But I see it time and time again, where whether you're doing it in person or over the phone, I know you do a lot of stuff in person. My entire career has been over the telephone. Mm -hmm. And the, the three things I see people constantly messing up is you wait to the very end of the conversation, knowing damn well, you're gonna get an objection saying, let me talk to my spouse, right? If you've done the proper rapport building, fact finding, at the very end, you're gonna, you're gonna get, let me think about it, let me talk to my spouse, not right now, maybe a money objection. Yep. And in, in my opinion, why wait to the end mm -hmm. to have those conversations? Like I, I live and die by this five step sales process, Let's right? It. It's just, I know in the beginning intro to fact find, you can intertwine them how you want, but there's always five things that I always want to cover in every single presentation that I get myself into. Okay. I, step one, I want to set very clear expectations about what's going on. Once I go into step two, that's really the fact finding. Why are you sitting in front of me, Andy, wanting to talk about solar or a new roof or me buying your house? I gotta figure all that out. I gotta figure out whether or not he's married. Is there another decision maker? That's right. Right, and if you just go through this and ask a bunch of questions, you're not gonna get the answers you're looking for. The, the, the person's gonna shut down, but if you understand how to build that rapport and you ask the right questions, mm -hmm. like a normal conversation, right? They don't understand why I'm asking the questions, That's right. but if I'm asking you, hey Andy, how long have you been married? You yep. know, 20 some years, yep. that's awesome, man. I'm at 13 years. How the heck do I get from 13 to 21 years of marriage, Andy? Yep. Now, I'm asking him this. He thinks we're just sitting here bullshitting and I am genuinely interested in Andy, mm -hmm. how long he's been married, but he's told me he's married. Bam, I know there's another decision maker in this scenario here. That's right. Now, he's gonna, I ask him, how long have you been married? He's, you know, and, and right now he thinks he's giving me advice. I'm asking him, how do I get from 13 yeah. to 21? Yeah, you're probing for information. Right, but it's at the very end. I know if there's any bit of doubt, Andy can leverage, let me talk to my spouse yep. or let me think about it, right? But in the conversation, if I'm asking Andy questions like, hey, I'm out here looking at your roof and it looks like you're due for a new roof, Andy. How long have you and Mrs. Elliot been thinking about this? Yet I'm asking questions, I'm downloading data, right? It's all data that I'm gonna have to use. It's like I, I say, I'm loading the clip up, getting ready for the end, because any objection Andy gives me, as long as the, the conversation that I've had is a, right, for the end, for the very, very end, that's where the dance happens. 
That's where the close happens. That's where all the money is made. But if I go into the dance unprepared with the moves that I have to make, there's just no possible way I'm gonna be able to close the deal down. If he says, let me think about it, and I've asked the right questions, I know how long him and his wife have been married, I know how long they've been thinking about it, they've gotten three quotes, I have all of this. It's simple to have the conversation of, listen Andy, I completely understand you saying you wanna think about it. Mm -hmm. And if I were in your shoes, that's something that I would probably say. But you told me here in the last 45 minutes of us talking together, that you and your wife have been thinking about this for the last six months. Mm -hmm. You've had multiple people come out to the property and you guys have already made your mind up. You're getting a new roof. You've already made your mind up. You're getting solar. While I have you here today, or you have me here, mm -hmm. why go through another quote? You guys know you're getting a new roof. What can I do here with you today to make sure you don't have to have another one of these conversations? But again, if you don't ask the right questions, you can't even have that conversation. And I'm gonna give a, a curveball here. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. Every day I have people text me to say, Andy, how can I make more money? And the number one thing that I hear is, Andy, I don't wanna quit my job and go into this industry that says it'll pay more money because it's too risky. So my buddy here, Eric Klein, is literally teaching wholesale real estate, how people can keep their job and make low to six figures to mid six figures part time, virtually from anywhere in the world. Now, why am I telling you that? Well, number one, we have an event coming up. It's already sold out, but in 2025, we're gonna be running a streamline of events that are gonna be teaching this. If you're watching this right now and you wanna be close to me and you wanna make this kind of money, he's telling you about it. And by the way, full-time, you can earn seven figures plus. So if you're watching this and you're like, dude, I need to know this. I wanna make money like that. Whether you're a risk taker or you wanna play it safe, you just make mid six figures. I'm cool with that. I really don't care. Guys, text the number below right now. I'm gonna send you the dates of the events that we're putting on in 2025. When we release the dates, they oh, yeah. always sell out immediately. Our next event sold out, I can't even sell you a ticket. But 2025 is releasing right now. I'll give you the schedule. Take a look at your calendar. If you can make one, it'll change your whole life. You've been looking for your way out. You wanna earn the money you've been wanting to earn. This is it. Text the number below. Let's get back to the video. I would say something along like, because I like to play here. Oh, I would, let's I'd go. say something like, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I, I totally understand. But however, sharing the information that you had being in your shoes, right? Yeah. You got three quotes. You're already well educated. If one of those quotes would have made sense, you'd have already pulled the trigger. Mm. But something wasn't r right with the deal. I'm not sure if it was the deal was right, but you didn't like the person. I'm not sure. But you kept going. Yeah. Because I know when something's right. You do it, you am do I right? It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's right. Doing it, people always say, hey, I totally understand, and if I was in your shoes, I'd do the same thing. Or I totally understand, and I felt the same way. I'd say something along the lines, I says, hey, I totally understand what you're saying, but however, knowing all the information that you know, you know, you don't have to feel that way. Mm. You yeah, don't yeah. have to feel that way, because look, you've been married 21 years. And the fact is you need to talk to your wife. Look, you guys have talked for 21 years about it's right to save money. Yeah. Am I right? You already know what she's saying. So thinking. if you weren't saving money, then we would call mama and be like, hey, we're not saving money. What do you think? Yeah. Because it feels like the wrong thing to do. But being together for 21 years, if you are saving money, then you guys have talked about saving money for 21 years. You already know she's on board. Yeah, yeah. Right? 100%. It's like, you see how you can spin it? And I, what he said is right. But I wanted you to feel both sides that like when you're learning sales, there's many different roads that lead to a sale. And I want to tell you something that you did I liked. He said he's going to ga gather intel early, right? He said the first 90% of the time, you're building rapport, you're making them fall in love with you, you're yep. gathering data, you're, you're uncovering these stones, and then, but no money exchanges hands in the first 90% of the time. Yeah. He said the last 10% of the times when you collect 100% of the money. Yep. And he said that's when you're getting ready for the dance. And the dance to him is when we're gonna ask for the sell. And you wanna have asked enough questions and you wanna act like, I always say like, hey, it's no big deal. Like, 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 oh, like, how do I do this? Yeah. And it's not like, how do you do that? It's like everything that you ask, it's no big deal. It's like nothing has a motive to it. Yep. So as you're asking them questions, every little thing that you say, you're like, oh, take that, I'm gonna put that in my pocket. You're gonna use it. I'm gonna it. take that, and he said loading the clip. Yep. And so it's two exact different set of words, and it's all the same. And he said, hey, I totally understand, and I feel the same way. That was his way. I totally understand, I feel the same way.
that's creating like, I get you. I said, hey, I totally understand. However, mm. I don't understand why you would feel that way because I understand that people would feel that way had they not done any research or this yeah. might be the first day in the market. But you've done a lot of research and yeah. you've been in the market and you've been t married 21 years. You know, so like, I understand how you'd feel that way had you not done any of that, but look what all you did. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm gonna take him a different way. Do both roads get us to a close? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm, in in the years of doing, listen to this, you, you've been in sales how long? 20 years. I mean, we've both been in most 20 of 20 years, life. 15 years, right? Yeah, but most of our life, me and him have all been in. But I only said that because I wanted you guys to understand the, the value of studying like what we're doing together. Yes. Is to, is to be armored where if that way doesn't work, you can go this way and you yes. can go this way. And yeah. you know. The only fact I was, I was getting ready to make is whatever industry you're in, like there are levels to this. Yeah, There's that. levels to it. Uh, I talk to people all day long that are in sales, but they are literally living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. They're broke. I talk to people that are, are getting by. I talk to people that live a good life and then I talk to people that absolutely crush the game. Yeah. We're all talking to the same people, mm -hmm. right? It's what are you doing to perfect your craft? That's right. Like the word tracks. Yeah, they don't have the, the rich salespeople don't have the golden customers. No, they got no. the golden game. Yeah, I, I, one of the things that I'd like to do. I, I mean, I've been building teams for 15 years. Is I've always been on the front lines with all my teams, mm -hmm. all of them. Even when I had the company, I was getting ready to exit for over a hundred million dollars. I had over a hundred guys in my call center, and That's I crazy. would I would go and sit in the cubicles with my fronters, mm -hmm. my appointment setters, not my closers. Yeah. I would go in there and sit in between in a cubicle with them, and just all day, just grind with them all day long. Mm -hmm. And uh, the there, I think too many leaders out there in the sales world that are trying to lead sales teams, uh, they get it twisted how, you know, if you're on the front lines, they're gonna respect what you say. Your team, I absolutely know, respects everything that you say. You're in the trenches with them. Yeah, every day. Every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think too many people try to step out of their businesses and yeah. it just crumbles to shit, yeah, right? Yeah, every day. I know we kind of went on a, a, a different spin here, but at the end of the day, if you ask all the right questions, yeah. when it's appropriate, don't list them all off at once. You gotta understand how to intertwine these questions mm -hmm. or the, the person will shut down on you. Yeah. But if they think you're having a normal conversation, but there's, there's, you're getting substance, you're getting information out of them that ultimately helps you at the end, closing the deal, I promise you're gonna make more money. Yeah, and it's like a bank account, deposit, withdrawal. Yes. Deposit, withdrawal. Because if you keep withdrawing out of a bank, eventually you're gonna run out of money. Yeah. And so like what he's saying is, you know, you kind of compliment them, you talk about something, and then, you know, you can withdraw, yep. right? And then you throw a deposit back in, and then withdraw. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually it's like, it's not, again, like you're hammering them for information. So they don't shut down. Which is basically sounds like an AI questionnaire. 100%. You know, how long have yeah. you been in the market? Have you had the chance to drive one of these yet? Yeah. Who's yeah. this gonna be for, for you and your wife? Do you plan on financing or paying cash? Do you have anything to trade in? Yeah, yeah. I'm just giving an example. And they're like, okay, I shut down. Yep. And so he's just saying deposit, withdrawal, which is good. And all you're doing by all these front-loaded questions that are really flying under the radar, like a drug plane, like they're being unnoticed, is that it's making you weaponize yeah. to yeah, be yeah. a master closer. Yep. The, I need to, you know, and here's just an example of, I need to think about it. It's like, if you go into that conversation, this is just putting it in perspective. If you, don't, if you don't have the right information, you haven't asked the right questions, and if I ask Andy, you know, he, he says, I need to think about it. Mm -hmm. And I have nowhere to go with it. And this is probably how most of you sound. The only thing that you can say is, well, Andy, what, what do you, do you need, need to think about? about? Like that, you have nowhere else to go yeah. in that situation. Or um, let me talk to my spouse. If you haven't asked the questions, the only thing that you can say is, yeah. what do you need to talk to her And about? then you're dead. And by the way, I need to think about it is uh, a smoke screen. What, they're, they don't like you, trust you, or want to do business with you. Yeah, and I like to multiple choice people. Yeah. Right? So it'd be like if I was sitting there in an office. And by the way, it's like there's different points where someone says they need to think about it. When I was in automotive sales and I was young, if I was outside on the lot and I'd show someone the car, I'd be like, Eric, you said you love the way it drove. You, you know, I obviously looked at you and your family while we were driving. You guys mm -hmm. seemed super excited. 
sits higher off the ground. Looks like it's gonna fit into the price range we're looking for. You know, if I can get the deal right, would you be happy to take it home? Andy, I need to think about it. Eric, of course you need to think about it. I haven't given you enough information not to think about mm -hmm. it. What I would like to do is give you a quick five minute proposal of all the numbers. So when you go home, you truly have something to think about. Would that be fair? Move, move the yeah. sale So forward. then I'm gonna advance the sale inside For, an office. Yes. Now I'm in an office, right? And let's say the, the papers, um, you know, the proposal's out, the numbers are on the table. Yep. So now it's not like I need something to think about. They truly have the numbers. And then there's a price, a payment, and a trade-in, right? And so they're looking at it and they're like, you know, Andy, I don't know. Um, can we get a copy of this? We're, we're gonna go think about it. And then sales people are like, oh! Right. You know, they lock up and I say, hey, I totally understand. I've been doing this for a long time, Eric. And when someone says they need to think about it, what I've learned is that there's something concerning them within the numbers of the deal, right? Yeah. It's one of two things. Either number one, you don't like the vehicle, right. but obviously we, we wouldn't have made it this far if you didn't like the car. I know you love the car, right? So it leads me to believe that it's the second part, that there's something concerning you, Eric, within the numbers of the deal. What is concerning you the most? Is it the price? the payment or the trade one, which one? Get to the bottom of what they're- Yeah, you got a multiple choice. Yeah. You gotta say, what is concerning you within the numbers of the deal? What I've learned, I've been doing it a long time. Something, when they say they need to think about it, something's concerning you. Is it this one, this one, or this one, which one? And they're like, well, it's really the payment. I totally understand. Let me show you how affordable your new vehicle is. Turn it around, go into a payment close. See, we took them from I need to think about it to now we turned it into them voicing what it yeah, really yeah. is. Because when they say they need to think about it, there's really something that's irritating them 100%. or some untrust. And even if they don't like you, the fact that you, they're requesting some information and you're still gonna provide a service, they still would do it if it felt right. Yeah. So you just need to get them to expose that thing. Couldn't agree more, man. There's levels to this y'all. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. Every day I have people text me to say, Andy, how can I make more money? And the number one thing that I hear is, Andy, I don't want to quit my job and go into this industry that says it'll pay more money because it's too risky. So my buddy here, Eric Klein, is literally teaching wholesale real estate, how people can keep their job and make low to six figures to mid six figures part time, virtually from anywhere in the world. Now, why am I telling you that? Well, number one, we have an event coming up. It's already sold out, but in 2025, we're gonna be running a streamline of events that are gonna be teaching this. If you're watching this right now and you wanna be close to me and you wanna make this kind of money, he's telling you about it. And by the way, full time, you can earn seven figures plus. So if you're watching this and you're like, dude, I need to know this, I wanna make money like that, whether you're a risk taker or you wanna play it safe, you just make mid six figures. I'm cool with that, I really don't care. Guys, text the number below right now. I'm gonna send you the dates of the events that we're putting on in 2025. When we release the dates, they oh, yeah. always sell out immediately. Our next event sold out, I can't even sell you a ticket. But 2025 is releasing right now. I'll give you the schedule. Take a look at your calendar. If you can make one, it'll change your whole life. If you've been looking for your way out, you wanna earn the money you've been wanting to earn, this is it. Text the number below. Let's get back to the video. But did you hear the word tracks? Yes. It's like the, the whole key in sales is that anybody watching this right now, um, we haven't given any specific, hey, this is only for these industries. No. Write down what your industry is. Write down your top five objections that you're getting every week on the phone, ones that you're just hearing all the time. And I want you to go find, okay, the top three ways that sound super smooth to overcome each objection. That would be five objections, three different ways for each one, and memorize them. Yep. And literally, like, memorize them where, like, you can say them verbatim, you know? Yeah. That alone, that, that one tip right there, and really, there, there probably is only four or five real objections. Yeah. If, if you think about it. I yeah. know a lot of yeah, you probably money. think there's a hundred of them. There's yeah, but not. you said money, wife, yep. you know, uh, think about it. Yep. Um, maybe it could be, I need to get another estimate. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Something along those lines. Competition. Yeah. Um, those are the, I mean, the main ones that come up all the time, right? Master them um, and you, change You know, I mean, I'm, they, people say things like, I'm six months out. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, that's when you need to understand your market really well. You know, hey, I totally understand that you want to wait six months to build your home. However, home supplies, we see them going up 13% per month. I mean, so the fact is that if we did that, you can only imagine that that would cost more money. Yeah. Wouldn't it make more sense if we could secure you'd be spending less money today, right? And it's like, you're reminding them the six month out isn't always good. Hey, I'm gonna wait six months out. What we've learned is that resale value on vehicles is the highest it's ever been right now, okay? A little birdie told me that NADA is on a, on a nosedive down into a crash. 
And if the fact is, if your car is worth X amount right now and it was worth 60% less in four months, would it have been worth the four months to wait? Damn no. Right it well, what if we could do it today and I get you all the money for your trade, but I don't set up a first payment for 90 days? Yeah. And you can get all the money for your trade and plus we push your payment out. Mm. You got to just, no, but like you got to just, you got to move because people sometimes, I don't know, man. I think they want to say no, even though they mean yes. It's like a woman. <laughs> Not all the time, but and, most and, of the time. And, and they, a lot of people have a hard time making a decision for themselves. Yeah. What they know is good. Well, and then they also don't want to fall into your lap and right. think they made a, a quick, yep. fast decision. Yep. Sometimes I think, sometimes I think we got to be good because people want to say no. Yep. Just even though they don't want to say no, yeah. um, and then they want us to make them feel good about it. I mean, yep. who doesn't want to feel good about buying something? I agree. Couldn't agree more. Dude, I do it myself sometimes, and I catch myself saying, eh, I don't know. And I'm thinking, dude, I just left my house, drove two hours to come buy this thing. Knowing damn well I wanted this? it. And then I got the jackass salesman going, well, okay, well, here's my card. And I'm like, man, I'm trying to buy something here, man. Can you do a little better of a job dude, for so me? so I walked in. Right? Yes. <laughs> I walked into <laughs> my shit, man. Sunday, this Sunday. I walked into Rolls Royce here in Scottsdale and I 100% was there to buy a car. Yes. But I had two calling ins and the night before I was in Fort Lauderdale. So I, I ended up Googling it while I was in Fort Lauderdale and it, it was two calling ins in Fort Lauderdale because I clicked on an ad mm. and I forgot it wasn't in Scottsdale. So I didn't notice it until I got to Scottsdale. I pulled up in my Rolls Royce. I was going to trade it in. I was going to leave there with a call in it. And I walk in, there's two guys sitting in their offices and they said, we'll be, be with you in a minute. And one of them comes out and he goes, how can I help you? And I literally pull my phone out. And I said, you guys got these two cars. And I was like, this one and this one. I like this one more, but I'm okay with this one. Can I take a look at him? And he goes, that ain't our store. And I was like, what do you mean it ain't your store? He goes, I don't know where that's at. I literally didn't know until I got there. And uh, he was like, yeah, that's, uh, that's in Fort Lauderdale. And I'm like, oh, damn, I was in Fort Lauderdale last night. And I was Googling uh, Rolls Royce calling it. Oh. So when I got here and he goes, yeah, but I tell you what, I'm going to give you my business card. Let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. Dude, I was there to buy a car. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I left there so pissed off. I'm like, this dude does not like money. Anyways, I don't know where I'm going with that. Other no, than you're going there with the guy didn't even try. <laughs> oh, to you didn't try to say, "Hey, man, look, I know that's cool. You're not driving one of those now. Why did you like that, dude? You know, like, look. I mean, obviously, you pulled it up on your phone. You're in Florida. What did you see that made you want to look at this? Right. It's like, how about we do a little bit? Well, really, what I want is I want a bigger SUV. I've got my kids. I got my family. So look, it doesn't gotta have a Rolls Royce on the front, right? You just like nice stuff, yeah, right? I, I wanted uh, to I, buy something. I know, but it's like, yeah, you know, I do like nice stuff. Dude, I got stuff that's a better buy than a Rolls Royce. You don't have to spend all that money. And plus, the maintenance are hell on them, bro. Mm -hmm. I got something that's better that the maintenance ain't hell on, and it's a better bang for your buck. Let me show you this. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, dude, the guy's sitting there saying, please take my money. I, I had to start this conversation somehow. Yes. So I said, <laughs> got one of these? And he's like, nope, get out of here. <laughs> Literally it's like, handed me his business card. It's like you almost have to walk in and just say, I don't know what I'm doing. Can you please guide me? Yes. Because if you don't, they just don't do their job. Dude, I was sitting there with my wife when I bought her a Ferrari for Mother's Day. No lie. I'm sitting there with my wife and I asked this guy, can my wife sit in this Ferrari? And uh, they're, they're like, oh, I can't find the keys. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 we were waiting on our Lamborghini to get serviced. We walked back around an hour later and I go, hey, can you see if you can find these keys? My wife wants to sit in this Ferrari. <laughs> no lie. Listen, listen, this is crazy. We can't find the keys. And so my wife sits in this Ferrari next to it, right? Yeah. And she goes, you know, I kind of like this one because it was unlocked. She goes, I like this one. And I go, hey, can we get the keys? And he goes, it says it's sold. I said, well, is it sold? And she goes, if this isn't sold, I'll just buy this one. No. Listen, he goes, he goes, if it has a sold sign on it, <laughs> most of the time <laughs> they're sold. So I don't know, but <laughs> let me check with my manager on Monday. Bro, it's like a Friday. Not. And, and listen, anyway, so here's what happens. She's hopping car to car trying to buy one. Bro, we're sitting in it trying to spend a half a million bucks. Jeez. No, but listen, this is so funny. I literally get, I walk out of there and I call Bradley and I'm like, hey, Brad, who'd you buy your Ferrari from? And he t sends me this guy's number. Nick. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, yeah. And I call Nick and Nick goes, I've got the same Ferrari, Bro. right? 
and and I'll, I'll 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 ship it down to you right now and i go done and jackie goes well wire him the money we walked out of there monday we get a call and the kid goes, hey, I want to let you know the Ferrari's not sold. Somebody put a for sale sign in it. wasn't even sold. I already I'm like, it. dude, <laughs> I'm like, dude. I'm like, bro, why couldn't he have walked over and just done, like, guys, listen, I know there's a for sale sign in it, but it ain't off the lot. Give me a minute. Yeah, let me go check. Give me a minute, okay? I might need to pull some strings. I don't know. But, ma'am, if you just told me that you would take this car if it wasn't sold, give me a second. <laughs> I'm going to war. Dude. <laughs> Everybody's so casual now. Yes. Um, so anyways, guys, talking about overcoming objections, ask early information, yes. um, deposit withdrawal like a bank account, right? Don't just drill them, but make sure that you ask the right questions. Objections at the end, you know, there's a couple things. If people like you, they'll listen to you. If they believe you, they'll buy from you. Mm. You guys know the stuff like like, they gotta yeah, like yeah, you, yeah. right? People, look, the, the, the biggest relationship killer is that relationships kill objections. If you can't make it a relationship early on, there's yep. usually gonna be an objection. Yeah. So like, listen, believe, buy, that's the deal. And then, you know, take your top three, top five objections in your industry, yep. write them down and, uh, and that's it. And by the way, if you're watching this and Eric runs a massive wholesale um, real estate industry, his guy's making $100,000 a month working from everywhere around the world. Yeah. Um, how he does it, I'll let him explain that. But you guys are welcome to text if you want to connect with Eric, right? You guys see the number on the screen. It's very simple. This is Eric Klein, good buddy of mine. He's in our brotherhood. We're super close. He's building a massive company. He makes guys lots of money. But we just, we've learned that sales and leadership will get you rich. The cool thing about what he does is that none of his stuff is face-to-face. -face. No. It's all done over a telephone. And you can literally do it virtually from anywhere in the world. Crazy. You got a guy so, in the Netherlands making money doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's like if you want to know how to do it, if you're interested yeah. in it, we do events all the time. Our, our event coming up next month's already sold out, but we do do them um, all the time. So you guys can text, say, when's your next event? Yep. Or you can get uh, together with him. He has courses you can take that'll teach everything. But, anyways, you guys see the number on the screen? Shoot him a text. Um, Eric, appreciate you. Good bro. time tonight. We just wanted to wrap about sales a little bit so you guys can get interested and maybe. Um, leveling up if you're in sales already or maybe you dive into sales and you get in or maybe even switch in industries and by the way your industry you can do this part-time part-time full-time anything yeah i was gonna say you could be doing it you know like where you already have your job but you want to do what he's talking about part-time yep. and learn it and then when your part times money making more than your full-time money you can change yep so love you guys have a blessed day We'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, looks like you made it to the end of the video. You're the true point zero 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 one percenters. Look, I know one percenters, it can make it halfway through the video, but making it all the way through, you guys are the best. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Number one, I wanna get closer to you. The fact that you made it all the way through the video, you're like, man, dude, I wanna roll with this guy. Okay, so I need to connect with you. Down below, there's a description box on this YouTube video. There's a link, it says coach with me one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, if you'll go and you'll enter your information, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. You can tell me what you need help with, what your goals are, and we will crush it together. I would love to help you guys go to the next level in life. You can tell I'm changing my life really fast, and I know that you guys want the same thing. I'd love to go with you on that journey. So right now, if you'd like to partner with me, team with me, if you want me to help coach you and push you, everybody needs a coach, a higher level of accountability to go to the next level. Go to the description box below, Click on the link, fill out your information. I'll talk to you in the next 24 hours. Let's kill it.